Welcome to a third video on creating our access database for our business. Remember our business is going to keep track of how many things we sell and who we sell them to. In this video we're going to create a table that will show how many products we have in our inventory. So let's go to the create menu and we'll start by creating a table. I'd like to first of all right click on the tab and choose save. Let's call this thing our products table. So our products are the things that we sell. And so in our products table, we're going to keep track of every item in our warehouse or in our catalog, you might say. Let's switch to design view and let's name a few of these fields. First of all, this is called our product ID and we'll leave it as auto number. The next thing we need is a name. So let's call this product name. So this might be some name like our car or phone or some computer that we sell. Uh, who sells this? Who makes it? And that's the third part we're going to come up with here. It's going to call our vendor ID. And we're going to leave that as short text for right now, but we're going to come back to that and change it. What else do you have in a product? Well, we have a wholesale price. The wholesale price is what they charge us when we buy it from our suppliers. And so the wholesale price is always less than the retail price. The retail price is what we sell it for. And so this is what our customers have to pay when they come into our store. Now these last two items, the wholesale price and the retail price, should be renamed. Instead of the data type of short text, let's change these to currency. So we're going to keep track of dollars and cents in these fields. So it makes sense that we name the field here. So it's going to be a number. But let's go to the vendor ID. This here is going to tell us which vendor is selling us this product. So how do I make sure that this vendor ID matches one of the vendors in our vendor table? Here's what we do. Instead of adding this field as short text, we're going to change this to something called a lookup wizard. A lookup means we're going to look it up in another table. So I choose this and it says, the wizard creates a lookup field, which displays values that you can choose from. How do you want your lookup field to get its values? I want the lookup field to get values from another table. So in our case, we're going to take the vendor ID from the vendor's table. Remember, we're in the products table right now, but we're going to borrow a number from the vendor's table. Let's go to the next button. Which table would you like to take your values from? We're going to go to the vendor's table and look up there. So I'm going to choose next again. When we do our lookup, we have to choose vendor ID because the vendor ID in this table is going to match a vendor ID in our vendors table. So I'm going to add that. Now it's difficult to remember the ID number for each vendor. So I'm also going to tell it to use the vendor name along with the ID. That'll help us be able to search and find things that we are looking for. Now when we are searching for a vendor ID, how do we want to sort them? I'm going to sort them by the vendor name. Now it says, when you do a lookup, when you choose a value from another table, would you like to hide the key or like to show it? They recommend hiding it. I'm going to actually show the vendor ID because it makes it more transparent to see how the program's designed. Let's go to the next button. Now it says, when you select a row in the lookup field, you can store a value in that field in your database. Notice that my vendor ID is the field that we're talking about here. This is the one that we're doing the lookup on. And so I want this vendor ID to match the vendor ID in the vendors table. So I want to make sure that this one is selected. Now, what would the value of your label be? Well, I'm going to choose vendor ID here. So the label will stay the same. I am not changing that. Now we can also tell this thing to enable this called data integrity. What this means is if there is a vendor ID in our products table, it has to match with a vendor in the vendors table. So there will be no orphan products, like a product that we have in our warehouse that has no manufacturer. So this means data integrity says one table affects another table. Let's finish now. Now it says we're going to create a relationship between these tables. The table must be saved before the relationship can be created. Do you want to save it now? Yes, we do. 
Now it, it doesn't look like anything changed here. We did this whole lookup process, but let's go ahead and close this table. And now we're going to choose database tools to see what went on behind the scenes. Click on this button called relationships. And you'll see that there are two tables listed in the relationship. Notice our vendors table and our products table. The relationship is between this field here and this field here. In other words, a product in our list will have a vendor ID associated with it. And so the vendor name for, let's say, Apple Computer will have some products in it, such as an iPhone or a Mac or an iPad. And so the vendor ID is associated with a company. Notice also the number here. This says 1, and this is the sign for infinity. That means that we have a one-to-many relationship. One vendor can match many different products. You'll see in a minute when we start entering data how this works. I'm going to close the relationships, tell it yes to save them. Now let's go open the products table. Double click it. We can start entering some data. For instance, let's talk about that iPhone, the product name. We're going to sell an iPhone in our store. But it's going to ask what vendor sells your iPhone. And here is the relationship now. Notice this list of vendors. This matches everything that we've typed in in an earlier video. So I'm going to say Apple Computer. That's our vendor ID number one. What's the wholesale price? Let's say we buy them for $400 and we sell them for $650. And so we have the first product. Let's do another one. Let's say we're selling Windows version 10. And our vendor in this case is going to be Microsoft. We buy this for $45 and we sell it for $120. So let's go invent some other products that we have in our store. So you can see that I've entered 11 different products. You can enter more if you like. Every product has an ID of a vendor and so you can see who is selling each item. The wholesale price is what we buy it from the vendor and the retail price is what we expect to sell it to the customers for. So now let's do a save and close on this. Now just like we did before, we created a, a form for each of our tables that we can enter in through the form view. Let's do the same here with our products. So let's click on products, click on create, and choose form. Now each form has its product and its description, and so we can enter and edit data just like we did with the other tables. Let's save this and let's call this thing our products form. I'm going to go back to the vendors form, open this up. Our vendors form is very basic, it just shows the address for each of our companies. But since we added products to our computer, we're going to recreate this form. So I'm going to uh, go back to the vendors table, click on create and form, and you notice that the new form that it created is different. The new form looks a lot like the old form. It shows the address of the company. However, what is different is that it's added another table below. This is a subform. So this takes all of the data from our products table and associates it with each vendor. So for instance, Apple Computer sells iPhones, iPads, and Mac Airs. So let's go to the next vendor in our list. So way down at the bottom where it says there are six vendors, I'm going to choose the next record. And it shows us that Office Depot sells two different things. Let's go to the next record. Microsoft sells a few things to us, and you notice that it, the associated records are all listed down here with what products that this company sells. So this is an, Im an improvement over our existing vendors form. So let's call it vendors form 2. Let's go look at the old vendors form. It's not near as useful, so I'm going to actually delete this one. I'm going to close it and I'm going to go to the vendors form in the index here and delete it. Let's say yes, it's permanent. So the vendors form 2 is the improved version. We can keep that one and that will be the end of our video here for adding products to our application.